Hello, dear friends and fellow masters. Please welcome to day 17 of Digital Dhyana Swadhyaya Yogam, brought to you by PSSM Global Team. I'm your host, Deepika Yaram from Austin, Texas. Before we begin today's program, let's take a moment to offer our gratitude to our Guruji, Brahmarshi Pitama Patriji, who unified all of us through this pyramid meditation. And let's also thank uh, the team of PSSM Global for providing us this beautiful platform of Swadhyaya Yoga sessions. So let's get started. I'm humbled and delighted to introduce our today's guest who needs little to no introduction. She is none other than Pranahita. Pranahita is a pyramid master who channels light language. She's gifted clairvoyant, certified coach, a life coach, certified mindfulness coach. She empowers individuals to get practical results through angelic communication, mindfulness, past life regression, and more to handle their physical and emotional issues. She is currently channeling thousands of women and transforming their lives miraculously with the wisdom and guidance that's flowing through Pranahita from higher masters. Pranahita started practicing pyramid meditation and associated with Patriji in the year 2004. Soon after starting meditation, she got connected to astral masters and started receiving messages from different astral worlds. She initiated PSSM activities in the UK. She also created and conducted unique intense uh, silence meditation retreats and led workshops on various topics across the world. She was also working as an IT manager uh, uh, in the UK in the, until 2017. She is joining us today to share the uh, wisdom on the book, The Energy of Life. Without further uh, ado, let's hear from Pranahita. Pranahita, stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Deepika. Uh, firstly, my immense gratitude to our Guruji, Ramashi Pita Mahapatriji, and uh, thanks to the Swadhyaya team. Sai, he had this great vision to take this uh, Swadhyaya to the whole world. So he started this with many languages in India, and now we are here on day 17. So thank you so much, Sai, and the whole team. Anuradha and Swarna Madam, and of course, Suresh Babu sir, and the whole team. Thank you so much. And I'm so privileged to be here to share with you about a wonderful book, The Energy of Life. So let me just show you the book. So this is uh, the book. It is by Margaret M. And also I'm so honored to be here with so many internationally renowned speakers and authors from across the world. So I request everyone to utilize this opportunity to gain wisdom from all these masters from across the world. So without any delay, let's dive into this subject, the energy of life. Uh, can, you can you please share the screen? Yeah. So, Let's know about the author, Margaret McElroy. She's an internationally renowned clairvoyant, a spiritual teacher, and a channel for the energy known as Maitreya. A lot of you might have heard about Maitreya. So Margaret McElroy channels Maitreya, who is in a spirit form. So Margaret had been teaching about the world of spirit since 1987, channeling Maitreya since 1992, and has traveled all over the world to bring the spiritual energy to the globe. She also traveled to India and she gave her sessions and speech and she channeled Maitreya in our Pyramid Valley. So many of our Pyramid Masters I have this privilege to meet her and to experience the energies of Maitreya. Also in 1999, 
Margaret even channeled Maitreya to a group within the United Nations. Margaret McElroy was featured in over 500 media publications, was a radio show host, and did numerous radio and TV segments. She authored six books. Through her experience of life and interactions with a wide variety of cultures, locations, and people, she became a woman of the world, gaining valuable insights all along the way. Today, let me share a few of the points that I really like from her book, The Energy of Life, where she shares about her life and how the energy will affect us and how we can utilize the energy in the right way and how many types of energies are there. So in this book, she mainly uses she writes it in the first person. So sometimes I'll just read some of the examples so that you can clearly understand from her perspective. So we all know about energy. We use it every day in our lives. Energy, sometimes we use it for electricity or as a fuel in our cars. I mean, a lot of people know about these different forms of energy, but not many people are aware about the energy of the mind, body, and soul. Of course, from the last one, ten, one decade, this has been changed. A lot of people now know, but previously, it was not like that. Not many people knew about this energy of mind, body, and soul. And also, we are not aware either how we waste our energy, our valuable, precious energy, which could help us in our daily lives. So often we allow energy to be wasted. We give it away and sometimes we just throw it away also. Nobody has taught us that energy is the most precious commodity we have, or even no one taught us how to use it properly. Most of the times our parents, the teachers, how to use money, how not to just waste it, not to throw it. But our parents and the society are not really teaching us how to use this energy which is very, very important in our lives, my dear friends. So in this book, Margaret is trying to share with us a few points about energy because energy is a tool to enable us to change our lives and to attract more abundance into our lives. Abundance here, my dear friends, it does, it's not just about money, but it is about abundance in all the areas of our lives. May it be relationships, may it be happiness, may it be career, may it be your health, every area of your life. And of course, peace. The way to do it is so simple, she says. It is about knowing the energy dynamics and not wasting the energy. When we understand different types of energy, how are we using that energy or wasting that energy? Then we will understand how to exactly use it in the right way. Many of you may not be aware that you draw in energy on a daily basis. As many of us know, we draw in energy on a daily basis, most of the times through sleep. And of course, everyone here attending also knows that through meditation, we can receive that energy. But it is on a daily basis. You draw energy into your body every day from the chakra at the top of the head called the crown chakra. Margaret says that we always receive this energy from our crown chakra. 
We are all like antennas, drawing it into our being. The food we eat feeds the physical body and the energy from the universe feeds the spiritual body. Many parents, they focus a lot on feeding us the right food at the right time, but not many people are teaching us how we can get that right energy to our spiritual body and just focusing on our physical body. In fact, the spiritual body is very, very important. We are all of us as body, mind and spirit. And yet we have forgotten the spiritual part of us. Because a lot of people think that spirituality means going to churches, going to temples and becoming like a monk or wearing those orange robes. But she simply says that spirituality means being happy. I hope you all agree on this. I definitely do. I truly believe that to be happy, we need to let go and become a child. Jesus says, be as little children. We are so serious in our lives and we constantly question for everything. Isn't it, my dear friends? We always ask why or how, who, what, and so many questions. This is the old way of doing things. Question, question, question. Always all these questions. When we constantly are asking these questions, we actually waste both time and energy with all of this pointless thinking that takes place in our minds. When one lets go, when you let go of all that thinking in your mind, and then you just allow that God or just letting that God, or you may just call it universal energy, or you may call it acceptance, or you may call it surrender, whatever the word that you have given, but when you let go of that fighting, of that thinking of the mind, one can let the natural flow of energy in our lives take place. It automatically takes place, my dear friends, when we let go of our thinking. Our destiny unfolds as it should, not as we try to make it. We have more energy because we aren't trying. And because of that, there is more energy for us to use. So a lot of us in our lives, we have so many worries. Uh, Margaret, she says about her example that she was worried about money most of her life. She always used to think about money. Think about how much energy you waste worrying about money, family, friends, the job, the car, and the weather. Isn't it true, my dear friends? Sometimes even we think about the weather. When we are in India, we may complain about too much heat. And when we travel to the other parts of the world, like US or UK, we may complain about the cold weather. So every time we have something to complain, complain about our family, friends, job, career, even the weather, all that energy, what is happening to that energy? So whenever our focus is going there, we are just wasting that energy, isn't it, my dear friends? So because it's your thought, when you're thinking about that weather and when you're constantly complaining about it, oh, it's raining again, oh, it's so hot. Instead of enjoying the weather, Every time if you're having some complaints about the weather or it's cold, it's hot or whatever it is, it is. When you start complaining about it, your energy is going there. You're wasting your energy. So try to make a list of all the times you worry and about what. Please do that, my dear friends, then you'll understand. Just at the end of today, start writing or take a fresh new book and start writing all your worries throughout the day. What were you worrying about? Then you will understand how much your mind 
will worry about all these things. So where are you wasting your energy? Where are you putting your energy? Because once you understand, you'll be able to alter it. You'll find that you have a long list as long as you are. It isn't easy to stop worrying either because the mind is like a computer program. It is set in its ways and only by changing the program, we can change ourselves. So she says about her own example, as I was mentioning about money, in her own words, when I think of all the energy I wasted worrying about the money, I could have used that energy to make money. See my dear friends here, how beautifully she's telling. It's a very simple sentence, but instead of worrying about it, can we do something about it? All I could do though was worry, be negative and moan and groan about the lack instead of being positive and allowing the positive energy in to help me manifest. The worrying actually stopped the flow. So whatever you worry about, even it may be your relationship, it may be your career or anything. If you are worrying, it's not a positive energy and it will stop the flow. So sometimes we uh, worry about our relationships, our family, our parents or our kids, but it does no good for them. It is not a positive energy. So always remember, do not worry about anything. Is there anything that you can do about it? So just start thinking in that way. How do we go about changing it? How can we reprogram the mind? We do this by not letting anything bother us. We effectively stop thinking about the negative. One of the first things I learned to do was to live in the now. Margaret says that in this moment of time and not to worry about tomorrow or even yesterday. Yesterday has been and gone. Tomorrow is yet to be created. If we live in the now, we are in the moment of time in which we can create exactly what we want. So in the now, we plan the future, knowing that we have sowed the seeds. In the now, I now manifest exactly what I need. If we let everything else go, and we can instantly manifest exactly what we need. So instead of worrying about it, when we are in the now, it will be much easier for us to manifest anything that we want. So when we worry about anything, we immediately stop the flow of energy. So it is all about energy. It is all about that flow of energy. We might not be able to move one way and indeed may be blocked from doing so. But the saying, as God closes one door, he opens another. It's so true. There's always an alternative, another way. When one starts to worry though, one stops the flow of energy. Nothing can get through that negative barrier. Absolutely nothing. We are often our own worst enemy. It is called self-sabotage. So remember my dear friends, do not worry about anything. Be in this moment, right now, right here. And start manifesting what you want. Start thinking in a positive way. When we have a positive thought, uh, for instance, if we decide a new car or a new house, from the moment we think it, we can manifest it because it is in the bag, it is in our bag, we are holding it, signed, sealed, and almost delivered. But we have the thought that we aren't worthy of it because many times we'll be having this, I'm not good enough, I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy, and that we, I don't uh, deserve it, I can't, sometimes uh, the thoughts like, I can't afford it, I can't afford a new car, or, or I can't afford a new house. 
So once these thoughts come into our mind, automatically we block the flow of energy and we stop the delivery. It was almost there, very close to us. But just with our thinking, our logical mind and our thinking, we stop the delivery. Whatever it is in our life, my dear friends. So just try to imagine how many times you have stopped the flow from happening. Stop the delivery of your desire. As I'm asking these things, think about those situations in your life. And if possible, as you're writing the list, also write down these things. Because once you're conscious about these things, you'll be able to take action on it and become aware of it, how your thoughts are stopping the flow of the energy. So the one thing the divine creator gives us, the power of manifestation. I hope you all agree on this. Each one of us on a daily basis can manifest exactly what we need. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor. If you have the desire for something, the universe will provide it. But the right thought has to be in the universe to create it. Why some people manifest what they desire more than others? I'm sure you many times you might have thought about it. Why I'm not able to manifest, why others are able to manifest. Because the only reason is because they are positive. They are 100% positive without any doubt. They don't stop the flow of energy. They don't have fear, doubt, or insecurity, or any other negative emotion. They are positive, they are miraculous in their thinking. And just because of this, the energy flows. I'm sure many of you might have heard a lot of stories where people were able to manifest what they want. It is just about that strong desire and the positive thinking. Even she tells an example. As I'm writing this, even you can think about your life. Are there any instances or situations in your life that might have happened? So she says, I remember once wanting a bicycle. I wanted it so badly, I asked God to get it for me. However, I didn't believe I could get a new bike. I was not, as a sight, worthy of a new bike. I actually said to God, I don't care if it, is, if it isn't new, a second-hand one will do. I didn't ask for a brand new one because I knew it wouldn't have been manifested as I didn't see myself as good enough to own a new one. I immediately manifested a second-hand one. So how many times in our lives we think about something? For example, we may think about some particular brand of a car or some three-bedroom house or something. But again, because of our logical thinking and because we don't uh, believe in ourselves, because we think that we are not worthy, or we may think that we cannot afford it, and then slowly our thought will come down, okay, maybe two-bed flat is okay, or maybe that car is okay instead of going for the high-end car. So automatically in our thoughts, because we feel that we don't deserve it, we change our thoughts. And whatever we want, we may attract it at that time. So this happens in most of our lives. So even write down those things if possible. And next time you can change it instead of changing your thought into the negative thinking, you can be in that positive and miraculous thinking and you'll be able to attract it. You just have to have the belief and the faith that it will come. When you have that, 
it is on your doorstep it will manifest the more positive you are the more quickly it will manifest fear is one of the worst conditions for blocking positive energy the fear that we cannot do something the fear that we aren't good enough the fear that we will fail it goes on and on we have so many fears in our lives but remember my dear friends fear is energy too its presence is the worst thing for blocking manifestation whatever that we want to manifest in our lives fear doubt insecurity and all these non positive emotions will be blocking them but we were all born to be energetic we can all manifest energy remember this energy is around us and inside us and yet we aren't aware of it once we do understand it it becomes the force with which we manifest create and inevitably change our lives it is in our hands it's just that we have to become aware of it we have to understand the dynamics of energy so there's something called personal energy personal energy is about your own personal power we all we all are born with some energy which is called personal energy and we can all use it but the majority of people have forgotten what it is and more than anything they don't understand a thing about it people like anthony robbins the speaker as many of you know have become very successful in motivating people to use their personal energy their personal power many people don't realize that personal power is connected with the spiritual part of us most people aren't interested in looking at anything spiritual they see it as connected with gurus new age stuff religion or becoming holy but it is none of these things energy is available to each one of us and it comes in directly from the universe we are all antennas for the energy and we can all use it to benefit our lives then you may ask me then what is the catch why are we not getting it or why are we not able to use it well the catch is you have to harness the positive in the energy because the energy is there all over but it's just that we have to harness it harness the positive in the energy and not the negative from the moment that you have a negative thought you stop the flow of positive energy negativity becomes a barrier to stop you receiving all the abundance love and happiness that you deserve yes we all deserve it many of us think that we don't deserve it but always remember if possible make a note of it or make a uh, just uh, use it as as an affirmation that i deserve it i deserve it whatever that you want in your life first say to yourself that i deserve it the reason you don't receive it because you are negative in your thinking somewhere in your mind you will be thinking that okay i don't deserve it it resides both in the physical body and in the spiritual body if it is left there it can literally eat away you it is a cancer spreading throughout the body all this negative thinking my dear friends so fear breeds negativity low self esteem breeds negativity all negative thoughts breeds and creates darkness in our lives that darkness stops the flow but some of you may ask what exactly is this negative thinking well uh in your day to day life just think about what are your thoughts how do you talk to yourself or how do you talk to others like i will never do it or i can't do it 
um, or I don't feel good about it. Uh, I don't feel peaceful. I'm not happy or it will never happen. I can't buy a house in my lifetime. No, I cannot become successful in my career or whatever it is, all these negative statements. So whenever there is any thought like this, just catch yourself, be aware. Awareness is the key, my dear friends. So once you become aware of your thoughts, of your negative thoughts, whatever that you are thinking, then catch yourself and try to change that negative thought into a positive thought. Like, I can do this. Exactly the opposite sentence. I can do this. I can become successful. Of course, I can buy a house. I feel wonderful. I feel so happy. I feel peaceful. So in that way, start using the positive sentences and try to change your brainwave pathways. Because if you say constantly all these negative sentences, it will really affect the energy flow inside your body. So start changing into the positive sentences. Also, just observe yourself. How do you feel when other people are arguing or when you go out to a supermarket or when you go out? How do you feel? when people around you are thinking or talking negatively. So just become very aware of your energy and do not take those energies. It isn't easy to do it on your own. Sometimes you always start using these negative sentences in your day-to-day -day life. Sometimes, may not be always, but sometimes you may be using this. Sometimes you may not be aware. So to start with, maybe talk to your partner about it if he understands all these things. Or talk to your children about it. That whenever I use some negative sentence, please correct me. And don't let your ego come in, my dear friends. It's okay. We are here. We are all human beings. It's not that we are more and our children are less. We are here to learn together, to share experiences, to grow together, to learn from each other. So discuss with your family and friends or your kids. And whenever you are using some negative sentences, they can remind you. And when they are using it, you can remind them. So in that way, you can change yourself. So Margaret says, one lady, she even carried a tape and she recorded everything from morning till evening, whatever she spoke one day, she just, she just experimented. So whatever she was talking, she was recording everything. And at the end of the day, she heard everything. And the whole of the day, she just used one positive sentence other than that she was using all negative sentences. I'm sure that might not be the case with you, but you can even give it a try for about a couple of hours, two, three hours, you can just record it and observe. In your normal day-to-day -day language, what are you using? How do you talk? So that you can catch yourself, so that you can start changing yourself. Of course, we cannot record what is going on in our mind, but at least we can record what we are talking. So we can start with that. So just be aware. And she also talks about the importance of taking time out for yourself. So most of the times what happens, we always try to do things for others. Most of the times, for example, a husband, he'll be doing uh, whatever the work that he is doing, the job, he thinks that he is doing it for his family because it is his responsibility. But is he really enjoying what he is doing? That is important. In the same way, if the wife, she does a lot of cooking or house cleaning and taking care of the kids or even working, balancing the work life and the personal life and the family life. Is she able to do everything happily? 
Is she able to take some time for herself? So when you don't take time for yourself, you may feel exhausted. The flow of energy may not be there. The flow of energy will be there, the spiritual body the, or the energy body, there will be flow only when you are doing things happily with complete awareness or with happiness instead of just doing for the namesake, instead of doing it for others, start observing yourself. How are you doing it? What are your emotions? Are you feeling frustrated, irritated for whatever that you are doing? Or are you feeling really happy? So just take some time for yourself. For example, if you like playing tennis, just go out and play tennis for some time with your friends. Or if you, take, if you like taking a hot shower or a bubble bath. So just take some time for yourself or even sipping a cup of tea or coffee or just talking with your friend for some time or playing with your kids. Whatever it is that makes you really happy, that gives you that energy. So start observing those small things in your life which can make a difference in your energy. Just start thinking, how can I improve my life? What is it that really gives me happiness? Because I know personally, a lot of my friends, after they moved from India to UK or US, other parts of the world, it was not so easy to get a helper, a maid or a nanny, or even to clean their house or to iron their clothes. They have to do everything by themselves, which they are not used to when they are in India. So what happens? They were doing this mundane task every day, but inside, there's so much irritation, frustration. What am I doing? Am I cleaning this toilet? I don't really like it. I have never done it all, all my life. Or I really don't like ironing these clothes. So if you are happy, if you are enjoying it, do it. Or at least try to change your thinking and start enjoying or play some music while you're doing that. But if you cannot do it that way, I request everyone, don't think about that $10 or 10 pounds or even 20 or 30. Don't think about that money, but just pay for some cleaner or just get the ironing done from outside instead of wasting your energy because your energy is more precious. I know a lot of you who are listening to this can resonate with it. Start thinking about it. Is there anything that you can do about all this mundane task? Either try to do it happily, to try to enjoy it. If you're not able to do that, get some help. And it will clearly change the energy inside you because these are the tasks which you do every week and you're wasting so much energy if you're not enjoying it. So start thinking about it. And also, Margaret talks about the chakras. As we all know, the chakras play a major role in our lives. Though we cannot see the chakras in our physical body, they're all there in our spiritual body. So she says, the word chakra comes from an Indian Sanskrit word and means wheel of light. Clairvoyance can see a wheel of light. The chakras are directly in line with the glandular system in the physical body. They work in unison together, body, mind and spirit. There is no separation of your spirit from your body. 
Christians may call it Trinity, as you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. When body, mind, and spirit are in balance, you are in balance. And life is peaceful and without disorder. So there are seven chakras. The crown chakra aligns with the pineal gland in the physical body. As we all know, the crown chakra is at the top of the head and it is where energy enters your body from the cosmos or from the universe. And there's this chakra between the eyebrows, the brow chakra. This aligns in the physical body with the pituitary gland. When this is active and working properly, we have clairvoyant ability and intuition. And next comes the throat chakra and works in, align in alignment with the thyroid gland. Communication is the key here. If we don't speak our truth or find it difficult to communicate, this can block the throat chakra. My dear friends, communication is very, very important. In this book, she also talks clearly about communication. That just because we are not communicating clearly, sometimes we are taking more and more incarnations just because we couldn't communicate clearly in our past life with someone. So we just want to clear that in this lifetime. And most of the times we can't say no to others, even though we don't like it. We can't say no, even for the small things. So she clearly says, whenever required, say no. Instead of feeling bad and guilty inside, say no. And most of the times the opposite person will understand. It's just as in our minds, we think that, okay, maybe if we are hurting the other person, maybe the other person may feel bad. So many things will be there in our mind, but it may not be that outside. So start saying no if required. And the next comes the heart chakra. It works with the thymus gland. When this chakra is closed, people suffer from, or they have fear being hurt. A lot of our reluctance can come from past life memory as well. It is in the heart area where the soul resides. So she doesn't go deeply into the chakras, but just a few things. The solar plexus chakra is in the stomach area. It is between the heart and the navel. But this is the most overworked of all the chakras because it is here in the solar plexus where we hold our fear and resentment. And as I'm talking earlier, Fear blocks us in manifesting things. It blocks our flow of energy into our lives. So most of the times we hold this fear in our solar plexus chakra. Sometimes it may be coming from this lifetime or sometimes it may be coming from our past lives. And solar plexus chakra connects with the pancreas in the physical body. When this chakra is blocked, there is none or very little sweetness in life. And the next chakra is in the navel area, what many call the belly button. This chakra works with adrenal glands. Most people who have this chakra blocked will not let go of their stuff. It holds the overload for the solar plexus chakra. So whatever that is there in the solar plexus chakra, the fear, the resentment, and sometimes the uh, past life memories. So they all will be overloaded in this chakra too. And the next chakra is the root chakra. She says that over 75% of the people, this chakra is blocked. It works in alignment with the sexual organs, the ovaries in women and the testicles in men. This chakra is usually blocked because we don't use our sexual energy in the right way. 
overall the chakras provide the spiritual energy that feeds the glandular systems in the physical body. And when all these chakras are balanced, we'll be very healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. Positive thought generates positive energy. By thinking positively, understanding your spiritual body, it's not just about understanding your physical body, but it's also about understanding your all your seven bodies. And with regular meditation, so you can be very, very healthy. And let's go to one of my favorite topics, which is called energy vampires. So how many times have you been to visit someone and felt really awful after being in their energy? I'm sure many of you do. So some of the other point of time, we'll be encountering such people when we talk with them or when we are in their aura, we just feel depleted of our energy, isn't it? So we are called energy vampires. They may not be doing it consciously, but they do that because of their blocked energy. Because these people unfortunately cannot manifest their own energy. They constantly moan and complain about life. Usually they have health problems which they cannot get resolved. And they love it when you visit or when someone visits them because the others are the source of energy for them. And whoever visits them, they don't realize they are taking your energy. You may just sit and talk with them and perhaps you may just sympathize with them and take on board all of their problems because you'll be keenly listening to them and sympathizing them. And then after that, when you go home and feel as if you have been drained. So think about those situations in your life. There are many people like this. They don't understand what they are doing and until they know and do something about it, they will continue to do it. Incarnation after incarnation. Nobody wants to be a vampire, but that is what these people do. And she calls them psychic vampires. So it also reminds me about control dramas from the Celestine Prophecy book. That is one of my favorite book too. And in the control dramas, James Redfield also talks about these control dramas of four different types of control dramas, interrogator, intimidator, aloof, and poor me. Where each one of us, we may fall into one of these categories at some other point in our lives. So where we unconsciously try to take energy from others or others unconsciously, they try to take energy from us. So when we understand these, energy vampires or the control dramas, we can become aware of it and it will be helpful for us not to fall into that. So whenever you encounter such people, instead of continuing the conversations, you better change the topic, change it into a positive one. Tell them to do more meditation or just ask them, let's go and watch a movie if they are too close and if they want to, to go out, instead of just sitting there and just listening to all their complaints, do something positive and don't let that negativity flow into you. That is very important, my dear friends. That is why she says, whenever you have to say no, say no. Just be confident, be open to say whatever you want to say. Tell them, Let's talk something positive. There's no point in talking all this negative. We cannot go anywhere. So just let, try to think in a positive way. Just tell them to meditate or listen to other masters' messages. 
because life is a choice. What is it that you are choosing is important. The choices that we make today shape our future tomorrow. We don't have to agree to what everyone says. We can be different. And you also say it's that 95% of the people are frightened to make the choices and to say no when asked to help someone. She goes on and says that, I was frightened to do so for many years. I felt that by saying no, I was creating disharmony and I had been taught to keep the peace at all times. My Christian upbringing had taught me to never say no, to turn the other cheek and do as requested. When I finally realized that I was my own creator, I was over 50 years of age. When I looked back over my life, at the times I had wanted to say no, I could have filled a book with the experiences. So think about your lives, my dear friends. Because she has written this with so much of experience for 50 years, she couldn't say no. And she says that because of that, she had so many diseases. She had so many problems with her throat chakra. And the organs associated with the throat chakra because she was not able to speak her truth whatever that she was feeling from inside she was not able to do that even uh, sometimes even she te she tells some examples and even in our lives it, it may happen that uh, we may visit a friend or another family and they are serving us some food which we really don't like even it happened to me a few days ago. So they really love that sweet, but I don't like it at all. They were like, no, just taste this. It will be so good. It will be so awesome. So they, because that is their truth, they like it, they love it. But for me, for my truth, I don't like that sweet at all. So at that moment, I was able to clearly say no. No, I'm so sorry. I really don't like this sweet. I already tried this. But most of the times what happens is just we may think that, okay, instead of saying no, let me just try that and let me just throw it away when they don't see it or let me just stuff it. What is it? It's just a small sweet. All of you may not be doing it, but most of you may be doing it. Just start observing the pattern. It may not be just about that food or sweet, but many areas in your life where you are not able to speak your truth, what you feel. Start thinking about those situations in your life and if possible, start writing them down. So when you start writing them down, next time you can take the right action. So you may be surrounded with so many well-wishers or wonderful friends and family or even partner and kids, they'll be telling you so many things to do. Do this, do that, or let's eat a pizza today. So whenever, uh, just an example, when you go with your husband or with your kids or a, or a friend, they may say that, okay, let's eat a pizza. And at that, that point of time, you may not be in a mood to eat pizza and you want to eat a pasta. But you are like, oh, that's okay. Let me just eat pizza and next time I can try, try pasta. You just compromise. So how many times are you compromising yourself? I mean, it's okay if you compromise. There's nothing wrong. But how are you feeling inside? And are you carrying it? And uh, the whole time that you are eating that pizza, are you really happy? Are you enjoying it? So start thinking in these terms for whatever that you are doing. Then you can clearly see a difference in your life. Thought is energy. What you think becomes who you are. So most of the times, try to think positive thoughts all of the time. Always in your thoughts, 
think about good health, abundance, happiness and fulfillment instead of thinking that, oh, I have this pain every time or I don't have money, I don't have a house. Instead of that, start trying to change that, those thoughts into the positive thoughts. Seeing yourself as very healthy, seeing yourself in a big house or seeing yourself happy and fulfilled. So when you start changing those thoughts, automatically the life shifts because you create your own life. There's no reason why everyone in the world cannot create the happiness they want. No reason at all. It is about being true to yourself. What exactly you want. You may want that big car or you may want that real happiness in the relationship. So be true to yourself and ask that. And don't let that fear come in because again, fear is negative energy. So along with the other list that I mentioned earlier, start writing this list of wherever you are unhappy. For example, I'm not happy in my marriage or relationship or in my friendship or with my kids. I'm not happy living in poverty or lack. I'm not happy being insecure. I'm not happy letting go of control. So even the physical things, emotional things, everything, write them down wherever you are not happy. By writing down the areas in which you aren't happy, you can see for yourself where your happiness, unhappiness lies. You can then also concentrate on making the situation better and turning it around. But remember, first of all, don't try to rectify all the problems in one sweep. You need to look at each one and deal with each one individually. So after writing the list, just try to work on one at a time and see within a few days, your life will start changing. As you let go of the chains of negativity that have been around you for so long, you will notice changes taking place. As you work on your list, you'll see great change start in your life. But always realize that when you worry about another person, that you stop their energy flow. As I mentioned before, never ever worry about other person. For example, if you want something in your life about that relationship. So do not think that, okay, the other person may not be, may not agree with whatever I say. Instead of thinking from their perspective, only think from your side because you are the creator. So when you start thinking from your side, you'll be able to change it because everyone in your life are just mirrors. And she also mentions one important point that never ever worry about others. Whoever it may be, your partner, your parents, your kids, don't worry about them because worry is also a not, not a very good energy. It is not a positive energy. Worry will stop the energy flow. So do not worry about anyone or anything. Because with every thought we have, we are using energy. From the moment a thought is created, it starts to become, become reality. It is like a draw energy waiting to turn into something. If we have a thought that we are ugly, eventually the energy will work to make us ugly. Like attracts like. If we send out a thought that we aren't successful, we will create just that. So it is very, very important for us to protect our thoughts. Every thought you have becomes a living energy, whether positive or negative. It is just waiting to manifest itself. We are all our own Aladdin with a magic lamp. We don't need Aladdin, we can do it ourselves. And there are, she, Margaret, uh, she did an experiment, an interesting experiment with her own students. So uh, in her own words, I picked one or two students in the class. As they walked into the classroom, I would say to one of them, have you hurt your foot? The student would deny it. And so I would say it again. 
this time reiterating that it looked as if they had hurt their foot. With another student, I would say, do you have a headache? The student would say, no. And I would say again, oh, your energy looks as if you have a headache. And by the end of the evening, the person I had asked about the foot would start limping out of the door and the other would say, you know, I do have a headache. So I then had to spend some time and energy putting them to write and explaining it was just an experiment and to release that energy. So think about your lives, my dear friends. Are you taking others' words and how it is affecting your energy? Because in our day-to-day -day lives, a lot of people say many things to us. Your parents might have told that you are not worthy or your teachers or your friends might have told that you may not sing properly or you are not at all a good dancer or you don't look beautiful or many of these negative sentences which you might have completely taken in and that thought might have changed it, might have changed how you dance or how you look or how do you feel inside? So it is very important to become aware and be conscious of others' words and thoughts. So like a filter, just filter out everything that others are telling you and take in only those positive things. So if anyone gives you poison and you know that if it is poison, Will you drink that? Definitely not. Then why do you take those negative sentences, negative words or negative energy from other people when you know that it is going to affect you? So you need to be really conscious and take a decision that I will not allow any negative negativity in my life. Be conscious, take a conscious decision and be aware one by day, day by day, just practice it. It may not just come in one day, but it's a continuous practice that you have to do. That's very important. So she even says sometimes knowingly we take other person's energies. Sometimes she tells with an example that she went to someone's place and she started having so much of craving about eating an ice cream. And when we checked, when she checked with the host there, then she understood that the host has cravings of ice creams, but because of the diabetes or sugar, he couldn't have it. But as soon as she went there, she started having that cravings. In the same way, in our lives, once we got married, our partner may be having some different thought forms. We may be having different cravings for food. We may be having different things. In the same way, when we are with our friends, we, they may be having separate things. We may be having separate things. But be aware, whatever that is coming from inside you, there's a craving that is coming. Just observe, do you really like it or is it just a craving, the thought form that you have taken it? So everything with awareness will be able to let go. It is not just about the craving, but it is just an example. It may be some other thoughts. Because I know some people, they say that uh, when they go to some friends or family, friends' places, they really feel like eating non-veg because they just left the non-veg and they became vegetarians after coming into meditation. But once they go back to their family or some friend's place, they start having these cravings because everyone there want him to feed that. So it is about your awareness and your choice. So in that way, start observing what exactly is happening when you're in someone else's energy. It is very simple, my dear friends. You don't need to worry about it. It's just about being aware. In the same way, if you live in a home that has some negative energy, 
you and she says, when you're feeling some negative energy, for example, if the couple and the family are really good at one place and they just shifted to some other place and suddenly started uh, quarreling and so many um, discussions and so many arguments, let's start thinking about the energy of the house. See, she says, it's just about becoming aware and taking that conscious decision. And of course, you can take help of the meditation and the pyramids to clear the energy. And most of the times, what we do in the arguments is try to try to stand up for, our, for ourselves. She says that, I was always trying to stand up for myself and justifying what I was doing. It was as if I had to prove that I was good. I didn't know inside of myself that I was good. If anyone criticized me or made reference to something I had done, I got on my bandwagon and let everyone know that I was right. I felt very strongly to justify myself. I no longer do it. In fact, I walk away and give it no energy. It isn't worth it. And because I don't waste energy anymore, I have more time for me, more time for the positive in my life. I ask myself, can I stand in front of God and know I haven't done anything wrong? If I can, and I feel good about it, then I don't give it any energy. This is very, very important, my dear friends, because in our lives, most of the times, we try to get into an argument with other persons, maybe your family members or anyone, and we always try to prove that we are right. Even when we think about some celebrities, most of the time there may be a lot of gossips about them in the newspapers, in the media, but they don't really give any energy to that. And just within a few days, everyone forgets about that. In the same way when there's an argument that is happening or something is happening, just think, is it better to just walk away? Or is it really required to start an argument and start trying to prove yourself at that point of time. Even if you shout, if you try to prove yourself, is it going to work? I know it may not be easy and it may not come in one day, but it's about practice again and again and again. If you think the argument may not go anywhere, if you think both of your energies will be wasted in that argument, just stop and walk away. That's important. Because sometimes, even in our lives, even for small things, it may not be about family and friends, but it may, it may even be about the objects in our life. If something is not working, for example, washing machine is not working or the car suddenly stopped, even some men, they may even kick the car, as we see in movies and even in real life, they may just kick the car say that, oh, shit, it's not working, or it's just use all these bad words and the energy, the negative energy will be coming out. But what will happen if you are kicking the car? Is it going to work? So in that way, start thinking in your lives, where exactly are you wasting your energy? It's very, very important, my dear friends. And then we'll go to the Next topic, sexual energy. The base or sex chakra is the most important chakra of all. This is the life force chakra. If the energy in these chakras is flowing freely, then the whole of our body is energized. If not, then the energy tends to seize up in certain places. When we have blocked chakras, we also have blocked physical organs after a period of time. The physical body is fed by the food we eat and the spiritual body is fed by the energy coming in from the universe. The mind is fed by what we, feed, what we feed it on a mental level. If we have any problems with the sexual part of our bodies, then this can cause blockages in the chakras. When we were created, we were expected to keep all the glands in our bodies moving with regular exercise and wholesome food. The same applies to the spiritual body. Most people use the glands to keep them moving. 
but a large proportion of the population doesn't use its sexual energy. Energy is a living thing. When it flows freely around the body, it can be a wonderful healer. The sexual energy is a powerful energy. We were all meant to use it, yet most of us rarely do. If people use their sexual energy in the right way, there would be fewer problems with prostate and vaginal cancer, because a lot of people has these prostate and vaginal cancer because of the blocked energy in the root chakra. She was told by the spirit world, and when Margaret was challenged, she was told by the spirit world that in the olden days, young people were trained to be sexual by special people who were trained to do so. Priests, priests looked after the boys and young men and priestesses looked after the girls and young women. Sex was considered a very important part of life. It was encouraged and taught before a couple formed a partnership. Young boys and men were trained to pleasure a woman. Young girls and women were trained to the pleasure of a man. Once a couple came together, the most wonderful experiences could be enjoyed because both partners knew what to expect. Even a lot of women, they have period issues because of the fear and repressed energy in the root chakra. She says that, I truly believe that we need to get back to the days when it was taught as an art. I believe that if we did so, and everyone was able to discover how important it is to their health and well-being, there would be less illness in the world. She says, I feel strongly that we need to turn sex into something sacred in order for it to be restored to the way it should be and was intended to be. It shouldn't be considered dirty or wrong. Humanity has, over the last 10 years, gone a long way toward turning attitudes towards sex back to the way it was. TV programs are now made on the subject, talk shows cover the subject, and it is discussed openly. However, until we can connect to it, connect it to energy, I believe we will always have a problem. Thankfully, today, there are sex therapists like Dr. Ruth, who tell us that it is all right to be sexual and to encourage the enjoyment of sex, including the use of a vibrator. Sex doesn't have to be considered as dirty or as wrong. It is natural energy, a natural function. And the sooner humanity recognizes that fact, the better off it will be. She even says that as a spiritual channeler and as she talks about all the high world energies and everything, some people used to laugh at her or when she was talking about the sexual side. So, but she says it is very, very important because it is also one of the energy. It has to be used in the right way. That is very important. And she talks about the past life energies. She says, most of us in our lives, we spend 80% of our life in our past life energy because she did counselings to hundreds of people and she understand that uh, most of the times, many things are coming from the past lives. So when she redressed people into the past lives and when they were able to release all those energies from the past lives, they were able to move easily in this life. They were, they were able to move forward. And they were able to get rid of all those problems that they are having in this life. She says, in each incarnation or life, we bring, us, we bring with us all unfinished business from past lives and also our life plan for our new life. Together, this is potent energy. It is a powder keg waiting to go off and we are unaware of this because most of the times um, we meet someone and we feel like we met them before. 
but we know that we haven't met them in this lifetime. So that is one of the examples of a past life memory. Something inside you triggered the memory of this person. And usually you have had a past life with this person, either good or bad. You're back again for another round of existence to try again to put right what wasn't resolved in another incarnation. Often though, we run away from the person because we go, as I call it, into past life mode. The soul remembers the memory, the pain or the pleasure, and goes immediately into past life recall. As long as there is energy with this per person, the connection is there, like unfinished business, until it is dissipated or removed. My dear friends, it's not just about the persons, but even with the animals who may be having such past life connections, such energies, or some unfinished business, where again in this lifetime, we take this incarnation to resolve all those unfinished businesses. We try to we come here with a plan to finish all of them, along with a new plan to do something new in this lifetime. So if you only knew how much energy you spend in past life mode, it would amaze you. Every day of every week, you're wasting energy on past life issues, which really have no relevance in your life now, but which you cannot free yourself from because you are unaware of why it is happening. So we have so many guided meditations to release that past life energy blocks. So you can give it a try. So even, even I do a lot of uh, past life guided meditation. Most of our senior pyramid masters, they did a lot of uh, these sessions to release all those past life blocks and also to release the blocks in the chakras. And with the root uh, chakra, the period issues, when I take sessions on that. So wherever you feel like there's a block in your energy, try to work on that. When you make that list and when you work on those aspects, slowly you'll be able to come out of that. There are so many examples of the past lives. So many of you might have heard a lot of things about how the past life may affect in this life. For example, she says about a woman who was not getting pregnant. And when she came to Margaret, she was doing a reading for her. And from so many incarnations, she was not pregnant. She was single or, um, she, I mean, she, she was not pregnant. She didn't have kids. So when she went into one of the past lives there, she had a child and she was pregnant with another child. And at that time, there was some war or something going on and someone stabbed her in her stomach where the child died and also they killed the other child. So the whole of her life, though she survived, so the whole of her life, she was in a guilt that I couldn't save my children. I'm not a good mother. I don't want children anymore. So she fixed that and in her cellular memories, she was carrying that. So she didn't have kids. In the same way, there are so many hundreds of examples. Sometimes we take the energy from the past lives. And when we do some past life regression or when we release these energies, then we'll have a choice whether to have, for example, in that lady's case, she, she'll have a choice whether to have kids or not in this lifetime. It is all about your choice, but instead of just carrying that energy, and it is not making you move forward. It's always good in your meditation to release all those energies which are not helping you to move forward. Positive energy. All thought is energy. If you knew the power of negative thoughts, you would never have one. I cannot stress enough how important it is to think positively. It is as if negative energy becomes a wall, stopping the flow of positive energy to you. When you have been negative for so long, a lifetime for instance, it isn't easy to let go of the negativity. There is no instant answer either. It has to be done one step at a time. 
even the food tasted, sometimes we taste different foods and sometimes we, we may like some foods, we may not like some foods. And it is the way uh, we are feeling when we are eating food that is also very, very important because the vibration of the food is very important. And uh, when we are having all these negative thoughts or uh, if you feel that there's no, not, many, not much positive energy in your home, you can use pyramids to change that energy or crystals. If it is there in your mind, if it's too much negative thinking, then you can use affirmations and of course meditation. So about pyramids, she says, I never used to believe in pyramids, but changed my mind after trying them. I remember once in a crystal shop, feeling a tingling energy going around my entire body. When I commented on this, the lady in charge pointed to the fact that I was standing under a pyramid. It was the start of a total belief in pyramids for me. Water, which has sat under a pyramid for as little as an hour, tastes softer, sweeter, and purer. I have a friend who keeps her scissors under a pyramid and finds that they stay sharper longer. Another friend put a disposable razor underneath and is still using the same razor two years later. So all these experiments, most of our pyramid masters might have done. So it's so amazing to talk about pyramid energy, how much of what we know whenever I listen to others' experiences about the pyramid energy, I really feel something good that I, every time I feel, okay, I should use the pyramid energy more. So if you're having pyramids in your house, start using them. So even put some water under that and drink that water and sit under the pyramids, start using them instead of just locking them somewhere. And as you all know about affirmations, affirmations really do work. The more they are said, the more they resonate. Deep within us, we have a subconscious mind. This part of us is where the self or ego hides the fear and other emotions related to negative actions. It is often very difficult to break the pattern of negative thinking. I have found affirmations to be a great boon to my own spiritual development and also thousands of others over my years as a metaphysical worker. So even Louise Hay, she also says that affirmations really do work. Millions of people across the world, they use the affirmations to change the subconscious mind. She also suggests using feng shui, aromatherapy, flower essences, there is the batch flower. Uh, batch flower is um, Dr. Edward Back. He's a, uh, he was born in England and uh, very similar to the homeo homeopathy. He invented something called batch flower remedies where he take the essences from the flowers and they really do work. And they're completely natural. And uh, a lot of people, even uh, I met a lot of spiritual people in Pyramid Valley and other places, they also mentioned that they do use bash flower and they really work very good. She also suggests energy therapeutics uh, like um, acupuncture, acupressure, foot reflexology, and uh, EFT. So EFT is emotional freedom technique. It is something like acupuncture without the needles and consists of tapping the endpoints of various energy medicines. It is very, very effective in dealing with a wide range of both physical and emotional conditions, including fears, phobias, addictions, pain management, and even diseases such as diabetes and cancer. It has even been used to increase sports performance. So she recommends all these things to come out of your physical illness, to be more positive. And the final thing she says about the power of the mind. 
of course, the most powerful energy of all to help clear negative energy is your own mind. If you can be positive most of the time, then the negative won't bother you. There is nothing like the power of one's mind. With our minds, we create our own reality. All of our negative thoughts come from somewhere. There has to be an origin. So as a past life practitioner for many years, she says that past life energy exists, but programming from this life, from the words and actions people use can also hold us back. We don't realize that unless they are removed. We seem to create and draw into our energy what we fear or doubt or have created. We create the same situations over and over, life after life. Even uh, my dear friends, start thinking about the patterns in your life. Because someone was telling that she always had a problem in her relationship. So she's, she feels like no one loves her. So in that way, it's there any pattern that is there which is repeating in your life? It may be coming from this lifetime, it may be coming from some other past lives. Start working on it on your meditations, in your meditations, and release that energy. So for everything, my dear friends, the answer to change lies in you. Are you all ready to change? If you are ready to change, with that intention, and with making all these changes, you will be able to change. And you should have the discipline to change the energy. So once you change that, we'll be able to clearly see the difference in your life. Your life becomes more prosperous, more abundant and more happier. It is all up to you. Are you all ready to change, my dear friends? I hope your answer is yes. And with everything that I shared today, start writing that list. And say to yourself that I am ready to change. And start when you start working on that, you will be able to clearly see the difference. Also, she talks about the energy of sound. So, most of the times, when we hear some sounds, we may not like it. Whatever the drilling sounds or some car, uh, the sound that is coming from the car engine, or there may be some different sounds that you don't like it, some heavy music that you may not like it, but your husband or your kids may like it. So even that is very important because sometimes uh, during our day, wherever we are, if we are in the workplace or if we are at the home, so there may be some sounds continuously coming from outside or inside. Are they, are they affecting you? Just start keenly observing it because at one layer, constantly there will be some rejection or resistance to that sound. So, and it will be draining your energy. Observe those sounds. And in the same way, there are some positive sounds. So, a lot of beautiful musics have been created in the last uh, few decades. Some new age spiritual music, some flute, some harp. And many beautiful musics. Start listening to those musics. Whenever you feel that there's any negativity that is coming in or any negative thoughts are coming in, start listening to that music and sit in meditation. And if you cannot sit in meditation, if you have work, at least start listening to that music and start doing your work instead of going into that negativity. It will really help you to come out of that negativity and to come and to completely change your aura and to completely change your thought and um, your energy to positive energy. It's very, very important. Try all these different techniques whenever possible. Of course, the ultimate thing is meditation. 
but whenever possible, if you can include all these things in your lifestyle, moment by moment, you'll be clearly able to see the difference in your life. And I wish each and every one to be in that positive energy. Thank you all so much. And my deepest gratitude to the author, Margaret McElroy. She is in the spirit form now. Maybe listening to us, maybe her energies are here. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the astral masters and guides who are helping us and guiding us throughout our journey. And thank you to our Guruji once again. Thank you all so much. Thank you. That was a truly remarkable sharing, uh, Pranahita. I am so honored to be part of this session today. Um, thank you so much. While we give few moments for our viewers to think in all these topics and come to us with some questions, I really would like to uh, talk about some key uh, points I took down. And uh, there, I mean, these are a lot of things that we've heard, but she put everything in terms of energy perspective. Like we've heard of manifestation, self-love and uh, positive thinking, but everything she put in terms of uh, uh, energy. And this is very, very interesting book. And uh, I highly recommend everyone to read it. And I, I personally, I'm gonna read it. Uh, just I, 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 I want to give chance to uh, other questions, but I just want to share one key, a few key things I, I took down. Uh, you mentioned something like do not waste energy by worrying about job, money, weather, anything. Preserve your energy flow by stopping negative thoughts. When we worry or fear, we block positive energy flow. Stop self-sabotaging ourselves. Live in the current moment. We can manifest exactly what we need in the current moment. Understand the power of it. And there is a lot more that you talked about today. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, I will uh, open up for questions. And viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, you can use the comments feature. And if you are connected in the Zoom link, you can raise your hand and ask your questions. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, Sopna raised her hand. And let me, yeah. Hi, Pranahita ma'am. Hi, Sopna. Very, very good to see you uh, on this platform. Uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing. It's a wonderful and insightful session. Um, my question is uh, for manifestation. When you said that we need to uh, constantly have that positive thinking to manifest whatever we want in our life, sometimes it happens that with series of events wherein you are very positive but still things don't work for you, you know, you tend to get that uh, feeling that, you know, this it, it might not work this time. But in spite of that, when we still, you know, uh, have that courage to still try and we, we set those positive intentions too, things don't happen. So people say it could be because of the karma that you accumulated or, you know, so how do we, uh, so is, is, does karma play a bigger role than uh, our thought power? Um, actually, if we start thinking about the new new age spirituality, there are many examples that without one person doubt, because most of the times what happens is some or the other way we'll be having that one person or two person doubt. So where uh, even though we have set all this, sometimes the vision boards and everything and in our mind we are feeling, but somewhere if you are not really believing it 100%, if there's some doubt, it may be delaying. Again, the karma may also play a role. But when we look at um, the Seth master, what he says is, there is karma. And once we go to one level, there is no karma. 
so a lot of people they may choose something in their life according to their life plan according to their kar karma but after coming here they will have a choice to change that to completely change that reality so when they go into this higher vibration of we are the creators when we are when they are in that higher vibration they will be able to create whatever they want if they do not have any doubt they'll be they'll be able to go beyond that karma when they are in that high vibration and there are so many examples from our pyramid masters only even though they saw that there is some karma that is stopping them from manifesting something but with the regular meditation they have surpassed that and they were able to manifest whatever they want for example uh, one lady she was not able to get pregnant <clears throat> because of some serious karma from her past life but just with doing meditation here and forgiving everyone from that lifetime she was able to manifest uh, children so in that way karma plays a role but we have the ability to go beyond karma when we completely believe that we are the creators when we raise our vibration yeah i hope thank i answered so your question yes yes absolutely thank you so much uh, pranav yeah thank you swapna ma'am we have a comment uh, from ragav he said thank you so much madam you are so fortunate we fortunate to have you here sharing wonderful wisdom and meditation so thank you raghav garu and um, thank you and uh, yeah i don't see any other comments uh, so um are we good to close this uh, sai conclude with the spiritual india magazine uh, then okay we'll close with it okay sure yeah thank you all so much uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, uh, someone was asking in some of the comments about uh, my sessions so i do sessions for ladies every day mostly addressing their period issues and all the gynec issues and uh, everyday challenges of life so i do sessions every day evening thank you uh, and thank I you do. so much for everyone yeah that reminds me i'm in your uh, whatsapp group for divine feminine sangha and follow you on youtube um so i pretty closely uh, follow you so yeah and and also i remember those days when uh, i used to wake up uh, at 12:40 at night and uh, do your light light session uh, <laughs> channeling session uh you did for like i think uh, 11 11 and 11 days right? yeah 11 and 11 yes right yeah yeah, yeah i i remember actually. those yeah. yeah so uh it it's again a true honor to meet you here today thank you so much thank you thank you and uh, we are having a question in our chat box uh, comment from pmc usa deepika sai so can we change our soul plan consciously in our present life please let me know how to find our soul plan understood or should i repeat it yeah so yeah so uh some of the spiritual teachers they talk about the soul plan yet when i once asked pramarshi pitamaha patriji about the soul plan or the purpose of life he told that it is us who can choose at any point of our life so we just have to be connected to the great intentions like for example uh, pyramid jagat or the uh, vegetarian the whole world or the whole humanity becoming a vegetarian you can align yourself to that plan and whatever that is coming from inside you every day observe what is it that is coming from inside you do you want to to work on any particular thing so just follow that day by day day by day when you follow it automatically 
sometimes whatever that you have chosen, it may change accordingly, whatever that you are doing. So I read a lot of books on that, but when I spoke with Patriji on this one day, so I got to know about this. So I would like to share this perspective. Yeah, and start thinking from this perspective. That is, you have a choice every day and you can write your own soul plan. Madam, and there is another question. Can we change our soul plan consciously in our present life? Please let me know. Uh, as I just mentioned, definitely we can change our soul plan consciously. So uh, how to do it? So it is about every day we have choices at every moment of our life. So it is about taking those conscious choices and in your meditation, you will be able to connect to your intuition. And with that, every day, make the right choice and you will be able to change your soul plan. Yeah, thank you, madam. It's a wonderful answering. Uh, Aditka, madam, please take over. Okay. So viewers, if you all uh, enjoyed this session as, as much as I did today, I urge you all to subscribe to Spiritual India Magazine. Spiritual India Magazine is an international bi-monthly English journal published at Hyderabad, India. Spiritual India team has assumed the responsibility of passing the knowledge of true spirituality obtained from various spiritual scientists, spiritual gurus from throughout the world and making it available to everyone. This magazine is the Hathra magazine of the Pyramid Spiritual Society's movement, India. Um, thank you all. And Sai, you can uh, play the video. Detailed uh, a lecture on the aspects of the energy of life, the book written by Margaret, and uh, various energies like negative energy, positive energy, energy vampires, and soul energy, whatnot. You gave a, a detailed description that's useful to all how one can change negative energy to uh, positive energy and get the man things manifested uh, at the universal level. When we are uh, positive, the universe will definitely take care of uh, That means we have to put all our energy in one single positive thought. That's what you have told. Uh, definitely, it is a useful uh, session today for all of us. Once again, uh, thank you, Pranay Prash. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks thank a lot. Uh, we have uh, one more uh, chat message from uh, Ramanish. Uh, thank you, Pranahita Tali. Me Sevalu Kuda, me Sevalaku Danyavadalu. Thank you. Uh, and Raghavindra said, Pranahita, madam, we are looking forward to, uh, for your sessions in the UK. <laughs> oh, sure, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you liked it. Um, 
because I was just wondering what to share in the Swadhyaya Yoga and uh, I just picked up this book. Um, it had so many different things which will be useful in our day-to-day -day life. That is what I clearly felt because um, sometimes it's good to uh, read about different uh, spiritual aspects and different topics. But again, every day, how are we living our lives? That is very, very important. At least for me personally, I think every day we have to live that happy life instead of uh, uh, dragging ourselves, dragging ourselves into uh, just le leading the life. We have to really enjoy each and every moment of our lives. Yeah, with that, thank you all so much. Thanks to the team. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.